All right, so this is my review of the new M1 equipped MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, as well as the new Mac Mini. It's the review of the M1 devices. Now, I know that this is a very important product, not just for Apple, but for you guys. Like I know a lot of you guys are very interested to see how does this stuff actually perform, right? Some of the benchmarks that they were showing during the presentation were really vague. And at the same time, because it's Apple, I know a lot of you guys wanna see this stuff fail, right? So I approached this whole review with a very, very neutral mind just like as fair as possible to just evaluate it from the perspective of not someone who's gonna buy it, right? Cause that already biases your brain into to some, in a direction that I wanted to avoid. I looked at this from the perspective of like just a nerd, a tech nerd. So we got three devices and I gotta say up front, the performance of these three machines was so much better than I thought they could possibly be. I had to rerun benchmarks, rerun tests over and over because the numbers just, they didn't make sense to me. I thought I was screwing something up. I thought I was botching the test somehow, but I reran them enough to the point where I feel confident that this is just what it is. So we're gonna start off here with the Cinebench R23 benchmark and the single core performance on M1 is fast, like really fast. It's on par with any of the top single core performers on the market. So AMD's best stuff, Intel's best stuff, it keeps up. Then we move on to multi-core performance. And this is where you start to see a bigger difference between the three machines, the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini because they are actively cooled, like they have fans inside them. They can maintain a fast clock speed or like a high clock speed throughout the entire duration of the test to the point where there seemingly isn't very much thermal throttling even if you let this test extend on indefinitely. Like they're just able to keep up with the heat output of the M1 chip. The MacBook Air, it does throttle, but the most weird thing to me was that this chip doesn't throttle quickly. Like you don't see it happen on the MacBook Air until about like the eight or nine minute mark. Like you push it full tilt and at minute eight and a half, that's when it starts to slow down. But usually it happens within seconds on a fanless device like this. Let's talk about real world applications. So I'm someone who doesn't use Apple's applications, but we'll kind of cover the stuff first because this is what M1 is supposed to do, right? You take Apple hardware, run Apple software, how does it do? So this is a chart of Xcode build times. It's the time it takes for the program Xcode to compile the code. And you can see a list of some pretty decently specced out systems. These are systems I have access to and some of my friends that have, are developers, I asked them to test out this chunk of code, give me back their numbers. And all those numbers make sense to me, right? I've I've had some decent experience with this stuff. These are numbers that I would expect. And then I threw them into M1. And the numbers that came out, the build times were stupidly fast, like to the point where I actually thought that I wasn't compiling it properly. Like I wasn't doing a fresh build and I did it over and over again. Cleared the cache, like these are legit. This is super fast to the point where I had a friend, he actually makes an app, a pretty well-known app. I can't reveal his name because he uses a Hackintosh, a 3950X, 16 core, really decked out system specifically for development, right? This is his build time. Somehow these M1 devices are keeping up. One of them being fanless. It's pretty crazy. And this was the moment, like when I got the numbers back, I was like, this is, this is real. Apple Silicon is real. Now I edit videos in something called Adobe Premiere, but it's not native to Apple Silicon yet. So I was testing. Final Cut, and the performance there is insane. And I don't just mean like, oh, Final Cut's faster than Premiere. I'm saying that Apple Final Cut running on Apple Silicon is so much faster and so much better performing than Apple's existing like high-end systems. It keeps up with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Like what is going on? Now, I wanna move this conversation onto what I feel like is the more important testing. How do non-native apps run on M1, right? Because the vast majority of apps out there are still not optimized for this type of hardware. And here's the thing. I've had experience with several companies that have tried to make ARM-based chips that run non-ARM-based software. There's emulation involved. And usually it's not great. So I had very low expectations, right? I fired this thing up and Adobe Premiere, this is again, an application that was written for x86. It's not optimized right now. And it runs weirdly well, like so much better than I thought it would. So this is playback of red raw footage 
5K, it's pretty gnarly stuff, and there's no skipped frames, completely smooth. This is not what you would expect from a non-native app running on an ARM-based chip. Like, it's just so strange. And you know, at this point, you guys probably think I sound like a fanboy, but I just gotta call it like I see it. My brain had an expectation. I had this idea of what good would be for M1, and this so far exceeds it. So it's just, it's just what it is, okay? It's strangely good in terms of the CPU performance. Now, I also tested the GPU performance. Now, in order to do that, I just had to play games and run gaming benchmarks. And the GPU performance is good, but it's not amazing, right? It just boils down to that eight core GPU being limited both by wattage and just by size. You can't compare this to a discrete GPU they might find in like a 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's impressive for what it is, but you just can't keep up with the big boys yet. Now, battery life battery life. So I did a bunch of tests. The first thing I wanted to do just to test the claims of Apple's 20 hour thing. So that's on this one, the MacBook Pro. They claim this thing can hit 20 hours of video playback. I set it to the exact same configuration. So it's half brightness. So that's eight ticks. And I hit it. I hit the 20 hours. Now granted, that is a darker screen than my normal testing. I normally run at 250 nits. I redid the whole thing at my brightness. I still got really good numbers. And that to me is one of the best features of Apple Silicon right now. The power efficiency is something special. Okay, I wanna move on to some concerns. I feel like I've had, and you guys probably share as well. The first one is apps, right? This is the most important and fundamental core of an ecosystem, right? If you don't have good apps that support all the hardware, then it's useless. So two things. Number one, I've always believed that the developers would come to this platform, but having seen the pace at which people have been developing for Apple Silicon, I am super convinced that it's good. It's not an issue. It really is a non-issue. The other thing is that these aren't just developers that are just making stuff, you know, on, on a short-term basis. The developers that we've seen in Apple's ecosystem tend to be people that are really good, teams that are so good at making extremely high performance, highly optimized apps for the hardware. Like some of my friends do it and I've seen the development projects, like I follow this stuff, I see how good they are at doing it. And so if you're concerned about apps not appearing on this stuff, I really don't think it's gonna be a thing with Apple Silicon. Number two, ports or the lack of ports. So. All of these devices have two USB-C ports or Thunderbolt ports, and it's a downgrade for a lot of users, right? The Mac mini used to have four, now it has two. The MacBook Pro used to have four, or you could get up to four, now has two. Uh, the MacBook Air still remains at two. And on the laptops, you can have up to two, technically three displays up at once. You can have the laptop screen, you have an external screen, and you can connect sidecar if you count that as a screen. So both laptops support two and a half or three screens. The Mac mini also supports three screens. You have uh, two externals and you can have, again, sidecar. But connectivity for the two port MacBook Pro is really tight to the point where I feel like some developers wouldn't be able to use this system because of its lack of ports, which is unfortunate considering how capable the system is otherwise. And they'd have to go with a Mac mini if they wanna go with Apple Silicon. Now, when it comes to choosing between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. So obviously there's some hardware differences like the brighter screen and the touch bar and stuff like that. But the MacBook Air is actually really powerful, much more powerful than the old MacBook Air running Intel hardware. And because the thermal throttling doesn't kick in until like the nine minute mark, this can go way further than you would think. Like you can edit stuff in Photoshop, you can video edit, you can code really comfortably on the system. It is a really capable MacBook Air. Like. <laughs> This product, the MacBook Pro, even though it has the fan, it, it doesn't really stick out as being a significantly better system for pros. So my thoughts on Apple Silicon right now, it's that this hardware is impressive. It, it really surprised me as to how good it was. However, I do feel like this is generation one. And when it comes to generation one of anything, the, the rate at which things improve is super fast, right? Generation two, generation three, they tend to just roll through technical improvements super fast. So I wouldn't be surprised if like when M2 and M3 come out, we're seeing double, triple, quadruple the capabilities of what this stuff is already, right? So just it's something to keep in mind when you make a purchase decision. I think if you're someone who has just been looking for 
Apple hardware. You need a MacBook for whatever reason, you wanna replace something that's old. This is, it's good. Like it really is something good. Aesthetically, it doesn't have a new look. The 13 inch screen has some big bezels and the 720p webcam still doesn't look amazing, but the performance is on point. Unless you care about graphics. And I really can't stress that enough. The GPU in M1 is good. It's so much better than the integrated stuff from Intel, but I really feel like they're gonna bring out some crazy good GPUs real soon. That's just, it's just bound to happen considering the progress they've made already. So if you're someone who cares about graphics, I'd hold out. And if you're a Windows user and you're looking at these benchmarks and you're thinking, I wish I had something that had that kind of energy efficiency coming down the pipe, we do have Lakefield from Intel to look forward to. We also have the, like the mobile Ryzen 5000 chips coming in. Those should be pretty good. Now I wanna leave this video off with one last thought that I've said before in previous videos, but I'm just gonna repeat it in this one. It's that if you are someone who's picking up a laptop right now or hardware in general, and you're looking at this stuff and you're like, this is the best and it looks super appealing. And I can see why it would be. Keep in mind that with Apple's hardware, and this is not a chirp on Apple, this is just the nature of their ecosystem. When you have, when you give a company like Apple full control, the full stack, the hardware, the software, they can make amazing stuff like this. It works, you, you saw the numbers, right? It works stupidly good, but you also lose a lot of control over your hardware decisions. Like I said this before, when Apple does awesome stuff, we all love it. But when they make stuff that's a little bit weird, like butterfly keyboards and touch bars on their keyboards that people don't love, you have to use that stuff as well, if you're in the ecosystem. Just put it out there for the people that care about this kind of stuff. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.